Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of That Sounds Fun. I'm your host, Annie F. Downs, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. You know I love today's conversation. We are in this special series called Summer Lovin', a That Sounds Fun podcast series in which we want to restore hope in dating and bridge y'all to helpful conversations and practical resources and amazing experts so that you see changes in your dating life, starting with you. And during Summer Lovin', we're talking through a lot of aspects of dating, and each episode features an expert, either someone who's written on the subject or works with a ton of people who are single or dating or a licensed therapist. And in a lot of the episodes, like today, we sit down with a male and a female who aren't married to each other or in life at all, and we get their perspective as well. Of course, they don't represent everything about dating or every person's experience, but I think they do a really beautiful job telling us about themselves. As we've told you for the last few episodes, which it has been so fun to hear from y'all as this series is starting about what you're enjoying and what you're learning. But again, this series is not an all-in-one guide to every part of dating, but it is a jumping off point and hopefully will offer you some good wisdom that you can start implementing right away. But what we want is to bridge you to experts and their resources so that you have something practical to walk away from and some good starters to conversations with the people that are in your life. And at the end of each episode, we're going to make sure to tell you how to find each expert and their resources. But before we dive into today's conversation, I got to tell you about one of our incredible sponsors. And this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. We're talking to a lot of therapists this month as part of our Summer Loving series because the healthier we are mentally and emotionally, the healthier people we will attract. And that is true in friendship and at work and romantically, really anywhere. But getting to this place isn't done alone. And no matter what season of life you're in, single, dating, married, therapy is so incredible at helping us better understand ourselves and how we interact with others. This is where BetterHelp comes in. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. They make it so simple. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. We love a quiz. They'll match you with a licensed therapist. And finding a therapist that is the right fit for you is so important. So you can switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. And be sure you're working with someone who is a good match for you. Plus, your session can be done right from home or, as in my case, tomorrow from a church on FaceTime. It's entirely online, and it's designed to be convenient and flexible and fit in your schedule. If you're stretched thin, it is easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and to never take a moment to figure out what you need for yourself. That happens to all of us. Therapy can give you the tools to find more understanding in your own life and help support your family and your friends by also taking care of you. We're big fans of counseling around here. You know it. And I think it's really important to prioritize time for therapy no matter what season you're in, including while I'm on tour, as I told you. And as you step into some new rhythms for this summer, consider giving therapy a try and help you find the balance that you need with better help so visit betterhelp.com slash that sounds fun today to get 10% off your first month that's better help com slash that sounds fun Today on the show, we're talking about one of my favorite things and with one of my favorite summer loving experts, Jackie Brewster. Jackie is a certified Enneagram coach, an experiential specialist, an author, and a speaker who consults with teams and couples and people across the country. Her latest book, The Enneagram in Your Marriage, is a seven-week guide that helps you go beneath the surface to build the foundation of a deeply connected, long-lasting marriage through better understanding of your spouse, or in our case, who we're dating or hoping to date. Now, let me tell you what we always say about the Enneagram. It is not the gospel. It is a tool. It is one of the reasons it is part of this series and not this whole series this year is we believe in a lot of different tools to make you the healthiest you possible. And we believe the Enneagram is one of those really helpful tools. And so we're excited about today's conversation. Like I'm excited about the love languages conversation. Like I'm excited for y'all to hear the attachment theories conversation. This is a tool that we get to use as part of our tool belt to being the healthiest version of ourselves. Joining us today are my friends, Kelly and Toby. And together we're going to talk about the way the Enneagram has helped us better understand ourselves in the context of dating relationships. And if certain Enneagram types are better matches than others. I have a hot take about this. And ultimately, we're going to talk about what we can learn about other numbers that helps us to love them better. So here's my summer loving conversation on dating and the Enneagram with Jackie Brewster and my friends, Kelly and Toby. All right, friends, welcome to summer loving. Are you excited? (laughs) Everyone's a little nervy. I like it. It's going to be fine. This entire episode of our Summer Lovin' series is about Enneagram and dating. So we're excited about that. But first, let's introduce everyone. Toby, will you start? Tell us who you are, your age, age bracket, single, dating, married, wherever you are, and what you do. 
Okay, cool. So I'm Toby. Uh, I am 22. My birthday is actually in like two months. Yes. So I'm about to be 23. Um, I am a singer, songwriter, artist um, living in Nashville. And I moved here about a year ago. Yeah. So it's been like a year of just like figuring out new land, new area. Yeah. Yeah. Have you dated anybody here yet? I have not. Okay. Not here. Right. Yeah. So I, uh, my last relationship was probably around like two years ago. Yeah. So. And for y'all to know, Toby and I have known each other since he was 13. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Very grew young. Up in the, grew up in the same church. Yep. So we ran into each other about a year ago yeah. at a restaurant, and I was like, Toby, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? So Hard to miss. This has been um, an absolute dream to have you on as well and yeah. to get time with you. Oh, so, thanks. Ma'am, you? Hi, I'm Kelly. I am... 43, I know you said age range, but what whatever, 42, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, and I, goodness, I've lived in Nashville now since 2004. I work for um, a business education company doing customer experience and single. Yeah. Ready, ready to meet the dude. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Our expert today. Jackie Brewster. Thank you for making time to do this, Jackie. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Oh, I think it's awesome. So you have a new book out called The Enneagram and Your Marriage, which yeah. is why I knew you were the person. Because so many of our friends listening, and those three of us sitting here, I think it's fair to say, I mean, we find the Enneagram to be a helpful tool, and we would like to be married. Mm -hmm. And so will you kind of talk about what got you into Enneagram and what's your like coaching story? Yeah. So what got me into Enneagram was um, a really chaotic day. We, I've got four children. And yeah. so I've been married for 24 years. But this was quite a few years ago when the twins were babies. And it was a very chaotic, awful mess of a day. And my girlfriend said, hey, I'm going to mail you something. And I was like, oh, I wonder what that is going to be. She's like, it's a book. I'm like, thank God. I want right. to get lost help in some me. story. Yes. Yes. No, it wasn't help me. It was like fantasy. Oh, like, like yeah, 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 was, yeah. I didn't realize <laughs> it was help me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I opened the book, it was help me. It was yeah. that I opened the book to The Wisdom of the Enneagram by Don Rizzo and Russ Hudson, still one of my favorite books for Enneagram ever. But it has this really weird symbol on the front of it. And immediately I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Like, is this right? Is this wrong? I don't know. I'm a Christian. You know, should I use this? Should I not use this? But I trusted my friend. And so I started down a journey of uncovering and discovering more about myself through this helpful tool. I started to read parts of the Enneagram seven. I tested as an eight, but I am a seven. Yeah. Um, I started to read parts of the seven and I felt like I was reading the depths of my soul. Like I felt like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, like these things I thought were broken or distorted mm -hmm. or wrong or bad inside of me were suddenly on a page describing me, but not in a awful way, but yeah. saying like, hey, there's some struggles inside of this. Yeah, And so, um, that was the beginning of the journey. And from there, I just grew to love this tool. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very, very helpful and useful tool. And that's what that is. Mm -hmm. uh, the Enneagram, it's just a tool. Uh, yeah, we say a lot. It is not the gospel. No. It is a tool. Right. It is a tool. <laughs> the transformation comes uh, from the Holy Spirit, you know, transformation. Yeah. But the, this is a wonderful tool that you can use to help just grow in your own self-awareness. And so that was a journey that took me down on this long path that I found myself as a coach, an Enneagram coach, author, and speaker about this subject. And I am passionate about it because I know that real life change happens when we become aware of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we can bring ourselves to the Lord and yes. He can help us. Yeah. He can help us clean up ourselves because we can't, right? Yeah. It's all those broken parts. But yeah, I love this tool. And so that has been the beginning of the journey. It's also why we're doing an episode with attachment theory and an episode oh with five gosh. love languages because <gasps> yes. all these tools, yes. this is another yeah. tool mm -hmm. and a list of tools. Yes. That the better we understand ourselves, the better we will be at dating and relationship. Right. right. So, so in that book, attachment theory is in that book. Oh, um, good. Oh, yeah. man. It's a huge part of understanding yourself. Yes. Is understanding <laughs> your bonding science. Your it's attachment. brutal. Mm. Um, okay. Kelly and Toby, would y'all mind telling us what Enneagram number do you connect with the most what's the language mm -hmm. you use jackie mm. yeah like connect with? with identify with yeah. yeah resonates with you yeah so i'm a three yes. my wing is a four mm -hmm. yes. so for the longest time i actually thought i was a three wing two oh, uh -huh. but it was actually my sisters that pulled that identity out of me they're like you're you're creative yeah and i was like no i'm not they're like <laughs> you are a photographer you're a musician you play sports you 
craft, you do all these things, like you're a creative, like you just yeah. pick up things and you're able to create. And I was like, oh, wow, maybe, <laughs> maybe I am, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, for the longest time, I was like, maybe what's this, what's this for? Like, what's this other side of the Enneagram that I was missing? Yeah. And so I retested and I was actually a three wing four. And it makes a lot of sense because like for so long, like I've put so much work and so much like identity into my achievements and what mm -hmm. I can do. And that's what I've seen in a lot of like threes, especially unhealthy threes. Sometimes it's they can just flaunt like I've done this and look at all my medals and look mm -hmm. at all my achievements. But as I've grown older and matured into, I guess, like a different version of me, like there's more of my four has been pulled out. Oh, interesting. And I actually tend to find the security in the four. It's mm. like, no, I have done all these things on paper that have seemed really cool, I guess, but I don't necessarily need to flaunt that in front of you or need mm -hmm. to show that to you because I just know that I'm a four who's really in tune with his feelings. Yeah. And that's kind of where I find like my security. Oh, that's interesting. Around people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's Jackie, because a lot of male threes I know. So I'm going to say a lot because it's actually <laughs> ones that I know. A I lot of male guess. threes are mm -hmm. more flaunty, even about yes. relationship. Mm -hmm. and And so... And I'm not, and that's probably mm -hmm. not all bad either, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. something about mm -hmm. that they're made like that on purpose. Yes. You know, that nature versus nurture piece, which mm -hmm. the Enneagram, it's both pa parts of you, the temperament of who Christ made you to be, and then the the home environments that you're raised in. And then we begin to develop patterns of behavior, which sure. is what the Enneagram is. It's just uncovering patterns of behavior that you've learned to help you cope over your life. Mm -hmm. And so with this Enneagram 3, leaning into this 4 and a heavy level here, it mm -hmm. is that authenticity piece. Mm -hmm. um, it does speak to growth and your relationship with yeah. the Lord for sure, yeah. because identity of who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. That is a big part with the three feels like I am what people tell me I am. You know, I, I do, therefore I am. Like yes. all these accomplishments, that's mm -hmm. who I am. And yeah. I hear you say something different, like, no, I'm finding a different part of myself. I'm exploring a different avenue of myself. And that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and that is definitely that for coming out and like knowing who you are. Yeah. yeah. It took me first denying the unhealthy part of the three. Mm -hmm. Like, instead of writing a list of all of what I am and mm -hmm. what you said, like finding my identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's when the four started coming out. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Kel, what that's about really you? Cool. I <laughs> I came about it a little bit more negatively. As I was reading, <laughs> I was like, oh, the one number that is so annoying to me is the two. And wouldn't you know it? Uh, your girl's a two with a three wing. And mm. then the funny thing is, because I'm so aware of the kind of potential struggles of, of both numbers. But I find myself proud of the little hint of three because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm not just afraid of rejection. I'm not right. just someone who's pursuing helping as much as I can and finding mm -hmm. a lot of worth in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm also someone who is accomplished and yes. who can you know, mm -hmm. knock out a task and probably be on time occasionally. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I identify less with the, like the kind of image obsessed. Um, mm -hmm. And yet I like Botox. So I don't know. Oh my <laughs> tell me, gosh. Tell me about this. <laughs> tell me more about Botox. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that is, it's neat to hear that three or that two with the three piece because that two is so highly relational mm -hmm. and that three wants to be wanted and liked as well. Um, but that balance there is like, I do. I do care about all these other people, but I also care about accomplishing some things for me too. Hmm. You know, and there's some maturity in that as well. As we grow, we understand like, it's okay for me to take up space. It's okay for me to have needs. It's okay yeah. for me to get Botox or to get a massage <laughs> yeah. or to yeah. pay for 15 yeah. of them and not get any of them. Right, <laughs> That's right, me. Right, right. <laughs> Currently, right. I'm like, yeah. what is the matter? Subscription I do not use. Yes, right. yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, just thanks. hearing you, even that growth piece for you. Yeah. Do you identify as a seven with, a wing one more than the other? Oh, you probably know what it is. Yeah, but eight. Eight all, yes. Oh, I am like me too. seven with an eight. Yeah. And when I first tested as an eight, I was like, I mean, I can get it. Like I got four yeah. kids. My husband is a workaholic, three, traveler, yeah. crazy. But then the more I dug into it, my heart longing didn't match. I'm like, I want to know yeah. I'm going to be taken care of. But yes. on an emotional level, I want to know that somebody sees me as worthy of loving. Mm. And if we're talking about relationships, it's that those messagings for 
for each Enneagram type to really understand those unconscious childhood messages in, in those heart longing messages. That's what you're looking for. Hmm. And whoever you choose to date, if you knew their Enneagram number and you knew that that messaging, it's like insight into something that has taken 20 years to get to, Yeah, you know, wow. for we didn't have this tool when Steve mm. and I got married. Right. You know, he jokes now, like, I wish we did. Oh, my gosh, yeah. we <laughs> saved so much heartache yeah. and yeah. awfulness. But it is that that heart longing. If you know that. Yeah. So can any mm. number, let's just dive into dating yes. with Enneagram as a tool. Can any number match with any number? Or are there certain ones that you're like, mm-hmm. if you're a seven, go toward this and go away from this? Any number can match with any number. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yes, they can. Uh, it doesn't mean it's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some I'm feel like harder. Thinking of a number, though. Like, yes. No, I feel re- repellent. Yeah. Toward yeah. My... So there's so there's certain personality types that are not necessarily going to be an easy dance. And yeah. so when I think about relationships, I think about three components of healthy, mature, connected, emotionally connected relationships, and it's accessibility. You know. Mm-hmm. Are you accessible? Is the person accessible? We want adult relationships to be reciprocal. Mm -hmm. So parent-child relationships and attachment, it's not reciprocal. It's like when the child reaches for you, um, you as a parent need to be reciprocal. Like you need to be there for them. Mm -hmm. In adult relationships, it changes. Mm -hmm. We want a reciprocal relationship. So are you accessible? Are they accessible? Are you responsive? Are they responsive? And are they attuning to you? Or are they just concerned about their own Mm -hmm. needs, wants, and desires? Mm -hmm. Okay, right? We can, right there, Mm -hmm. you can weed out half of them, Um, (laughs) right? Not numbers. I just mean people in relationship. You probably can pick up pretty quick. And then it's the engagement piece. Like, if you're accessible and you're going to attune, then can we dance together? Can we engage? Can I give a little and you give a little? Can Mm -hmm. I don't love basketball, but I love my husband loves basketball so I'll sit on the couch tuck my feet up underneath his legs with headphones and watch my own show but I'm with him Mm -hmm. so there's like compromise that happens in this engagement piece and so there's no better best number combination what's more important is this piece looking and finding somebody that is accessible and responsive and engaging and you know the Enneagram helps with understanding of what both people are looking for in relationship Toby, have you dated where Enneagram was a part of either the decision-making or the understanding of the other person? Yes. Yeah. For sure. Um, I've definitely had relationals with uh, a seven. She mm-hmm. was she wanted to do everything and wanted to go an- anywhere. And I feel like she really brought that, that seven out of me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because oftentimes, like, when I'm not closer to that number, I'm very much more black and white. So I'm like, oh, I could never move to Nashville or I can never do any of what I want to do because it's not realistic. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so um, she was just like, just move. Like, just what are you? Yeah. What are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. why, what does it matter? Like, mm-hmm. everything will work itself out in the end. Wow. Just trust the Lord yeah. and just move. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm here. <laughs> what a catalyst. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That, that relationship really moved your life. Really did. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Really did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Kel, what it. about you and dating? How is, I mean, Enneagram number... Do you want to know right away when you meet him, like, what's your number? Or do you want to wait and let that be discovered? I think I might have previously said A, and now I would say B, because my last relationship, that was one of the first things that we kind of identified. And it ended up being a real kind of sticking point. Um, He was very (laughs) anti-Enneagram. And -hmm. and then sort of rolled his eyes at at the numbers or the mm-hmm. attributes, I guess, of his numbers. So that ended up being kind of frustrating in the beginning. And then it became sort of a, and I'm curious what you'll say about this, yeah. but sort yeah. of an excuse for behavior yes. of mm-hmm. like, well, this is just, you know, this is what I struggle with. And you knew that from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then that just kind of shut me down. So now yeah. I kind of think like, mm-hmm. oh gosh, it'd be so cool to not box myself in, not mm-hmm. ask. And it, and it also seems like that's a long answer, but it also yeah. seems like it's sort of jumping the gun intimacy level wise oh, wow. because yes. it's such – it feels mm-hmm. like such an opportunity to almost have like a, a hack. Like you can oh, jump way down the road in terms of understanding. But mostly you're assuming. But mm-hmm. we're strangers still. So yeah. so I kind of think it – I mean I'd say that that relationship was one that like didn't really have a shot from the beginning. But – I wonder if it's because we just like jumped in, but I was just so excited about it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, so now I think I might give it some space. That sounds fun. 
Hey, friends, just interrupting this conversation about the Enneagram to share about one of our amazing partners, your Enneagram coach. Okay, does talking about the Enneagram today make any of you want to dive deeper into studying the Enneagram? Or have you ever considered getting certified to become an Enneagram coach? Maybe you could use an additional stream of income and one that allows you to work from home and help change people's lives for the better while making some extra money. This is where our friend, your Enneagram coach, comes in. As y'all know, because we're literally talking about it today, we love the Enneagram around here. And your Enneagram coach, Beth McCord, is one of our go-to Enneagram experts. And get this. Jackie Brewster was trained by your Enneagram coach. So you're getting to hear the results of what Beth McCord's teaching can do. Beth has a signature online course called Become an Enneagram Coach, and registration for it is open right now with a special enrollment window just for us, just for our friends. Nearly 2,000 people have dove into this gospel-centered Enneagram coaching certification program. As I've said many times, the Enneagram is a great tool, but it is the gospel that brings transformation in our lives. So whether you want to become a full-time Enneagram coach, do it as a side hustle, or incorporate this incredible tool into your ministry, your leadership development, your parenting, or team building or your dating life. This course can train and equip you to do just that. Beth teaches you how to create an income while helping others get unstuck in their lives and includes everything you need to become an Enneagram coach in just eight weeks. Registration for this course is only open until Tuesday, June 13th, and it won't be open again for months. The best part, you can use the code that sounds fun to get $200 off, you guys. If you have a passion for the Enneagram and guiding others to growth and freedom, this is a great time to do it. Learn more and sign up at your Enneagram coach.com forward slash B E C like become an Enneagram coach B E C. And if you're listening to this episode after enrollment is closed, you can still sign up to be notified next time registration opens at your Enneagram coach.com forward slash B E C. And remember once you're in there, use that code. That sounds fun and get you that $200 off. And one more amazing partner I get to tell you about today, Nutrafol. We're always talking about fun ways to style our hair, but what about ways to keep it like healthy, right? Millions of Americans experience thinning hair. In fact, it's super normal. It's just not openly talked about, especially among women. If you're among them, you're not alone. There's a solution you can trust to deliver results. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. It supports healthy growing hair by targeting the five root causes of thinning, stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism. Yes and amen. Nutrafol addresses all of the through whole body health. I love that Nutrafol offers three different physician-created formulas that support women throughout all stages of life, including postpartum and menopause. So no matter what season you're in, they have got us covered. With the natural drug-free medical-grade ingredients, they're bringing us the most reliable results. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. 3,000-plus top doctors and stylists recommend Nutrafol as an effective and high-quality solution for healthier hair. You can grow through thicker, healthier hair, and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code that sounds fun to save $10 off your first month's subscription. This offer is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time, plus free shipping on every order. So get $10 off at Nutrafol.com. That is N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com. And the promo code is that sounds fun. Okay, now back to our summer loving conversation with Jackie, Kelly, and Toby. I remember before I did Enneagram anything, I didn't like any personality typing anything. Mm. The fact oh, that like I do no this. Myers Briggs, none. No nothing. Funny. You're yeah, you're like, it's too No, rigid. I was like, no, I was like, girl, <laughs> if you want to get to know me, let's have coffee. But you're not going to know my number oh, and think you know it. me. You're yeah. not going to know my letters, <laughs> yeah, whatever yeah, that yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. and think you know me. So I right. 100% resonate with what you're saying as far as like jumping the gun or getting in there or feeling like you know somebody or they know you before yeah. you actually have an opportunity to organically, you know, see where the relationship goes. Yeah. But in that bad, you know, that bad behavior, the Enneagram mm-hmm. is not an excuse for poor behavior. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen, amen. Yeah. We can I, stop I'm now. surprised how many people <laughs> talk about that yeah. mm-hmm. and have that experience of someone mm-hmm. in their life mm-hmm. saying, hey, I, I'm yeah. a six. Yeah. What can I do? I'm yeah. going to be afraid and right. I'm going to always come up with, or yes. or I'm a one and I'm going to see the problems here. I'm sorry right. if you need me to be optimistic. I'm yeah. never going to be. Right. And yet, Jackie, mm-hmm. 
in my own heart, I go, mm-hmm. hey, I'm a seven and the bucket is always going to be mm-hmm. have, having mm-hmm. holes in the bottom. Mm-hmm. So I need you to have grace with me <laughs> yes. that I feel like my life is running mm-hmm. out all uh-huh. the time. Uh-huh. So how do we balance that oh in dating of those two sides of that coin you do so much work you guys it's, it's <laughs> right you're, right. So you're like I wish the three of you would get healthy and yeah. Yeah. more healthy so, so we do, this, yeah. do coaching we I'm do coaching yes. that's what we do yes. we're all working on ourselves yeah I think it's just it really it's it's self-awareness and self-awareness takes time so oh. when we're talking about dating right if mm. you don't know yourself it's going to be really hard to know what you want in another person or what you know your expectations are versus reality even mm-hmm. with another person so I I love the tool of the Enneagram for self-awareness first mm. and then as you become more aware of yourself you might see different parts of, of a you know a person that you're dating a partner that you're dating and be curious about those mm. but there's the curiosity that comes with the Enneagram is what I care about Mm-hmm. I want to know why. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, where does this come from? Because I do deep work with people every mm-hmm. single day. And we get into the into the root system of mm-hmm. these things. And so it's not it's not like I'm an Enneagram 7 too. So it's like, well, I'm always scattered. I'm only scattered when I feel overwhelmed, when I yes. feel overstimulated, when I don't feel well supported, when I feel like the world is on my shoulders and I, and I don't know who to turn to. I feel completely scattered. Yeah. When I have systems in place and I actually follow them, Mm. It's kind of the key piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a trick. that's a two-parter. Yeah, it's iffy. Yeah. You know, it's iffy. But when I do those things, then then I can find some grounding. But it's the work around understanding yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really beautiful growth work on the other side of the enneagram. Mm-hmm. The enneagram just really is a tool to help you see the box you've put yourself in. Mm-hmm. We're not trying to box you in. Yeah, we're trying to show you good. that since as early as birth. Okay, maybe. The age of two is what they say around patterns of behavior. We develop patterns of behavior around how do I keep myself safe? How do I get love? And how do I get my needs met? And Mm -hmm. your personality will tell me how you learned how to do that. Wow. And so when you choose to date Jeez, somebody, Jackie, Jackie. We can, uh, why are we all crying? <laughs> <laughs> we can stop now. Yeah, we're good. You guys yes. can just hit re- oh re- rewind and just listen to that again. <laughs> yeah. that's so exciting. when you're thinking about wow. dating yeah. and you're, you're recognizing these patterns in somebody, mm. it kind of is the pause around this is how this person has tried to get love, to mm. keep themselves safe, or to get their needs met throughout their life. Mm-hmm. And do wow. I want to be a part of that? Wow. Yeah. Do I want to be a part of that? Do I want to be a part of that? Yes. Am I able to be a part I, of that? Oh, I, mean, I love that. Am I able to be a part of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're going to come up. <laughs> Here's yes. where I would like. Uh, that's really good, Jackie. We're not so done with that good. by any stretch. So good. Toby and Kelly, are there numbers you love? Are there mm. numbers that if, if you found out someone that you're automatically like, that gives them a leg up in this? Hmm. Four. Four, Ooh. yeah, you love a girl with feelings. Oh, <laughs> I to love it. I know. fours so much. <laughs> four it's line fours. Like, I just love, I love fours. And one thing about, I feel like this is like, I'm, I'm just gonna, I have to say this. Yeah. I feel like this is a problem with males today. It's we have a hard time being vulnerable. Mm. And walking as a male, and I'm, I actually know how to be vulnerable and somebody who, Holds space for my vulnerability. Yeah, mm-hmm. draws me to them. Yeah, I love it. I love fours. Yeah, mm. Kel, who do you love? Mm. I love sevens and eights. Yeah. I'm really, really drawn to the fun makers and the like. I just feel like eights are like the adults in the room. They've got things under control. They're going to tell me the truth. I'm not going to wonder. <laughs> and it's funny because I feel like that's a number that gets kind of a bad rep. But I am yeah. so drawn to it's often do you to my like surprise. being friends with female eights as much as you like feel attraction toward male eights romantically oh gosh that's a good question i do think there's a distinction i do think i'm like more <laughs> I do romantic think there's a distinction. <laughs> meaning it's not very flattering to myself but i steer away from maybe a, a female friendship eight yeah. more than i do like a romantic yeah male eight mm-hmm. yeah hmm. Where's, and Jackie, I mm. love male nines. Oh, I love oh, nines. Oh, I yeah. love nines. I just think they are they are so easy. Like, they're so great, and they're secretly taking care of you all the time. <laughs> yeah. yes. They're not saying it out loud, but they are secretly always taking care of you. Well, 
You know what, Annie? They <laughs> are in the positive outlook group, just like we are. Yeah. Two Ooh. sevens and nines. Yeah. And so I wonder if that's some of it too. Yes. Like they're along for the ride. Like yes. if you're going to go, they're like, I'm down to go. Yes. You yes. know, um, I love that. Yes. <laughs> Who else do you, I mean, you're married to a three. I am married to a three. Um, and three sevens and eights tend to work together well too, because we're all like, go fast and go forward. We are, we don't do well with feelings. Yeah. Mm. So we kind of are like, put those bad boys to the side and let's <laughs> yeah. just get going. Yeah. You yeah. know, Who then, needs you, those? then you find yourself in 20 years of counseling That's and you're exactly like, right. well, yeah. here we are. <laughs> let me hold space for your feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Stephen is working his tail off to figure out feelings yeah. um, all these mm-hmm. years later. Mm-hmm. Um, so He's also led extraordinarily in your family and in his jobs through a lot of pain and trauma. And yes. his threeness has served so many of mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. He, his threeness has served me mm. so much. So it's both, yeah, right? It it's is both. It's mm. both. He he's it's that function and feel. Yeah. And so he has access to both. Threes have access to both. They don't typically live connected to both. They typically are in one lane or the other. But yeah, I enjoy that three seven combo. People often People, a lot of people say things like, how do you guys do it? Or you guys shouldn't work so hard. And we're like, we feel like we're like at 50%. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, and other yeah. people feel like we're yeah. at 150. Yeah. We don't feel like that. Yeah. Our kids might. None <laughs> of them are threes or sevens. <laughs> none of them. None. none of your four are threes or sevens. No. So interesting. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So when we're thinking of dating, the are we safe? Are we loved? And... Mm-hmm. Cared for? No. Uh, So it's like, how do I find safety? How do I find love and connection? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then how do I get my needs met? Mm -hmm. So pretend we're all on Bumble or on some dating app and we match with a person. Uh And on their profile, it says, I'm a four wing five or I'm a six wing seven, whatever they are. Mm Mm-hmm. What's our next move? Are we supposed to get the book out and look up what a six wing seven feels loved? (laughs) Are we supposed to like... Or do we wait? What What's our move when yeah. they're when they've laid it out? I've seen it a couple of times on dating apps yeah. where people just lay it out. I mean, you can do a lot of different things. You know, I like options. So if I really cared about the Enneagram and I really had a good understanding of myself and was curious around another, then I would go to a social media person <laughs> like probably I'm like I just go take a screen capture of one of my things that says like the heart longing of each one of those yeah yeah numbers. just go to yeah. just, just go, go. To your Enneagram just I go mean, to mine or so many somebody good. else's go to somebody yeah. else's and be like okay so if they say who cares about the wing okay who just right. we do care about the wings people. yes yes, yes. but we main, do, like, not right now number. not yeah. right now we're just so a six so they care about safety and security Okay, is it going to drive you crazy mm. that yeah. they care about safety and security? Yeah. Is it going <laughs> to, right? Does it, does it drive you crazy, Yes. Yeah. yes. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it's no, going to be caution. It's it's, there's yeah. going to be caution. I'm raising a six. There's a lot I'm, of caution. I want to make decisions yeah. quickly and keep cruising. Yeah. Mm. And you want to have fun. And so you that positive fun. outlook group. So you're like, what are you looking for? You know? And mm. that's probably the list I'd go. Like, what am I looking for in a relationship? Mm. And then... What do I know about these numbers if I care about this? Like, what do I know about these numbers? And, you know, each number has a different focus of attention. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to matter. Like the Enneagram 1's focus of attention, right, wrong, good, or bad. Mm -hmm. The Enneagram 2's relationship, highly relational. So they're going to care about relationships. The Enneagram 3 is achievement. Like they are the most workaholic numbers on the Enneagram. Mm -hmm. So they are going to care about achievement and success. And they're going to be super fast drivers. Uh, Enneagram four, they're going to be in their feelings. They care about authenticity and acceptance. Mm -hmm. We love that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Enneagram fives, they care about um, investigating, like thinking about things, gathering knowledge, all kinds of stuff. Um, They also care about their time and space and don't invade it. Mm -hmm. So if you are a quality time person, an Enneagram five could be difficult Mm -hmm. If mm. that was an issue, mm-hmm. Enneagram six, safety and security. Enneagram seven is fun, limitless. There's a lot more to a seven, no, but you're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> not all the things. Yeah. Uh, the Enneagram eight really cares about protecting the people that they care about. So you're going to feel that fierce wow. protector from them. Yeah. You know, and at Enneagram nine, their focus is on um, it is on keeping the peace or being a peace. Um, I like being a peacemaker versus being a peacekeeper. I really mm. like the distinction between the yeah. two of those. So that the Enneagram nine is like, I don't love conflict. I don't I don't love chaos. I want a peaceful environment. And mm. so w- when I think about those focuses of attention, you got to know what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is it okay to say, 
I do not want to date a five. Absolutely. Is it, I mean, is that rude to no. do? Because there are great mm-hmm. five males yeah. out there, but I've had multiple experiences <laughs> with fives that made that made my anxious attachment level up to mm-hmm. a million, mm-hmm. even though I'm more mm-hmm. securely attached. Yeah. Because of the way mm-hmm. that particular number processes makes me feel very alone. So right. if you think about accessibility, responsiveness, and engagement, okay, in Enneagram 5. Responsiveness and engagement. You, as an Enneagram 7, positive outlook, a lot of energy. Hey, let's go do this thing. And Enneagram 5 is in a different grouping. The one three, the one three fives are in a different grouping. And they are more logic-based. You know, I oftentimes think like they're the ones with their eyes down on the on the keyboard in a book on their phone, things like that. And so they're not aware that there needs to be an emotional connection. Mm -hmm. And so if you, you are like, I need an emotional connection. I need to see you care. I'm trying to get you somewhere. I'm trying to like, if you can't get, if there's not access accessibility here, that would be a problem. That would be a problem. You would feel like, man, I'm trying to get you all the time and I can't access and you, I am too much for them too which, so it's not an mm-mm. Annie's right yeah. and a five's wrong it's this it's, this particular seven and most particular fives don't seem to just isn't I'm raised in a yeah. five yeah. he hardly comes out of his room I was gonna say is your son a five that <laughs> yeah. that's, I like being yes. friends with them yes. it's just when it's romantic yes. it feels it's very mm-hmm. different unless it's really and when it's uh-huh. really good it's yep. fireworks yes. but fireworks uh-huh. are very short lived and then it is very dark mm. that's yeah. good that's by perfect. the nature of fireworks yeah. do y'all have numbers that you go like it's not the number. It is me plus the number that is not working. Yes, mine is eight. Really? Mm-hmm. Eight women. Yeah, yeah. Eight women. I reason being is because like I feel like in most situations I can lead and that looks different. Like I can lead and be out in front of a group of people and yeah. I can also lead by my actions. Mm-hmm. And I feel like some eights naturally they kind of just like take some of that leadership away from me mm-hmm. instead of instead of sharing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they it, mm. it, does it feel like they don't trust your actions because it's not like it, they may not be letting the actions speak. It feels like what she was saying. It's they just they care so much. They try to protect who they care for so much, mm-hmm. and that then over it oversteps boundaries ah. because it's like oh, I just care about you so. So let's let's go this way or let's go this way. Just trust me because mm-hmm. because I care about you and you should trust that I care about you. And so yeah. I, I know where we're going so I can take mm-hmm. us here. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, for so yep. and for me, yeah, just for me, eights is just yeah. like it's yep. it's like, like you said, it's not it's not the number necessarily. It's just me plus the number. Yeah. Right. You're, and you're 100 you know? percent right, male or female. So mm-hmm. if this is a work environment, mm-hmm. a friend group, or a dating relationship, threes mm-hmm. and eights, there is like they're either really good or they're not. Oh, really? That's like a thing. <laughs> yes. He's identifying. Yeah, he is. He, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. You are. Toby, look at yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it's a so thing. It yes, <laughs> and it's because they're both assertive and they both yeah. want to be in control and they yes. both want to drive sevens. We kind of sit between the two. We're like, that's right. Yes, but that's if you want to lead, we'll follow. Or yeah. I mean, we're probably gonna. It's kind of like a tornado in a hurricane all yeah. at the same time. But yeah. we're there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the seven sits a little bit different in that. But that three and the eight, it's like. If I respect you, if there's equal respect, we're good. Yeah. If there's not, if something happens and there's a rift or something where I feel like you've tried to usurp your my authority, anything like that, yeah. that's usually when there's a breakdown that happens mm-hmm. and there's a lot of frustration mm-hmm. inside that pairing. Mm-hmm. But again, the hope is for our married friends listening yes. or for people in relationships, yes. all numbers can work. They can, yeah. yes. Some and are just going to take you giving absolutely. a little bit more. Yes, and I have mm-hmm. them. I have combos that are three and eights. And the, mm-hmm. they're, that you're the dance, yep, yeah. that I coach. And the dance is just different. It's like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. understanding this about you, understanding that when I say this, this is how you're taking it. And yeah, there's a lot right, of growth. What you heard versus what I said. Right. Yes, yeah. yes. So I see that number combo mm-hmm. in marriage, in relationship. It does work, but there's a lot of work that goes into that yeah. Yeah. combo. Yeah. Yeah. And Kel, there, oh yeah, go Toby. There are just like a lot of different threes out there and there are a lot of different eights out there. Yes. Right. So it's not necessarily that every three That's and eight's good. not going to work. One hundred percent. That's right. So there is a That's right. I like yeah, that. I'm sure there are sevens in the world who like vibe seven women who vibe so hard with fours and fives. Yes, mm-hmm. they love them. <laughs> not you they, go. Not and then the Lord's going to probably hit me a four or five. And we'll see what, and you'll, you'll be coaching us in five minutes. Yeah. But, but yeah. that is, Kel, what about you? Are there numbers that are, for you, plus that number is not the yeah. easiest mm-hmm. connection? Mm-hmm. I, I think my answer is romantically a yeah. one and a six are hard because I so value connection yep. and 
nuance. I don't love rigid anything, mm-hmm. honestly. Mm-hmm. So I love the idea of also um, caring for people and and having that reciprocated. Mm-hmm. And I feel mm-hmm. like with sixes, it, it mm-hmm. can be an anxiety-driven mm-hmm. mm-hmm. thing. And mm-hmm. with ones, it can be, well, this is just the right thing. So mm-hmm. conversation done. So romantically, those are tricky numbers for me. And now I'm so curious, which oh, I love <laughs> and I love your distinction because you probably work with ones and sixes. And so it's different uh, yeah. in a work relationship or oh, friendships. And friendships. It's different. I love but ones when and we're sixes. looking at those romantic relationships. It's an intimacy. Mm, yes. So can you hold space for me? And what does that look like? And that one in the six, you're in the same stance. So ones, twos and sixes are in this compliance stance. You all moved towards each other. Mm. And that just might not be what you love as far as like, no, 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 I don't want you guys to move towards me. I want to move towards somebody else. Mm. Oh, interesting. Wow. <laughs> that is really interesting, Could be. Jackie. Could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Like, I'd be curious, like, around, hmm, that's interesting. Okay. So that feeling of like me trying to make you guys happy or trying, I have to be the one to figure this out or I feel stuck Mm. in your expectations or your Mm. unspokens. Mm -hmm. I feel stuck in this. I don't like that feeling. I feel much more free if I'm moving towards and trying to figure out other people or other Mm -hmm. expectations. Yeah. That is really interesting. You know, in our like best girlfriend group, there's five Mm -hmm. of us, one, one, two twos and two sevens. And none of us date twos or sevens. It's so yeah. true. So it's when you're saying this to me, I'm having this realization of like, oh, who our girlfriends mm-hmm. are that we're attracted to, yep. that we're the most intimate with in friendship mm-hmm. are not the mm-hmm. same kind of uh, personalities we're looking mm-hmm. for romantically for mm-hmm. any of the five of us. In mm-hmm. fact, those have been yes. challenging. Yes. But in friendship, they're, it's Perfect. what is working for right. us. Yeah. Yes. That is. Yeah. Even what oh. you just, I'm thinking about that in my own friendships. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, those two. Yeah. 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 I, Yes, I like my three. Yeah. I do. I like that strong driver. Yeah. Like, all day long, get it done. That sounds fun. Hey, friends, just interrupting this conversation one more time to share about another amazing partner, Gospel for Enneagram. We are all about bridging you to resources that can help you not just as you date, but as you live. And this is another incredible one when it comes to understanding yourself and the Enneagram. My friend Tyler Zach has done some incredible work around the Enneagram. You can actually go to his Instagram and he has an awesome set of videos on the origins of the Enneagram, which I really loved watching. And he's written an incredible 40-day Enneagram devotional series. And I just cannot get enough of his stuff, y'all. He has a book for every type that he's working on and the type seven book, which is how I identify. I cannot wait to get it. It is so personalized the way he handles each type. It is incredible. Tyler's stuff is no fluff, practical, Christ-centered guides that will make you feel incredibly seen and understood. And get this, it's endorsed by our friend, Dr. Russell Moore, editor-in-chief of Christianity Today, and the incredible Beth McCord of Your Enneagram Coach, who we were just talking about earlier. And hey, this is fun. If you want to test drive a devotional before you buy it, you can download a free five-day devotional on Tyler's website. It's the perfect way to dip your toes in and see how profound these books really are. Plus, while you're there, check out his free self-typing guide to discover your type without taking a lengthy test and get his free ebook, listen to this title, called Should Christians Use the Enneagram? Yeah, it's good, you guys. You get to hear a very thoughtful response to the questions that a lot of people have around the Enneagram. So just head to the show notes for the links to all of Tyler's free resources. It's at tylerzach.com slash free. That's T-Y-L-E-R-Z-A-C-H dot com slash free to grab your personalized book and your freebies now. And one last amazing partner to share with you, Thrive Market. Okay, if we're worried about filling our minds and filling our hearts, we got to fill our bodies too. So whether you're cooking for yourself, your family, or planning a date night at home, do you dread going to the grocery store like I do? I just can't, you guys. I, The parking, the lines, the decision fatigue, the amount of cereal choices, the amount of cheeses I have a hard time resisting. There's just a lot of problems at the grocery store, but I got great news. Thrive Market to the rescue. Thrive Market is my go-to for all my grocery and household essentials, and the convenience of getting it all quickly shipped to my doorstep is a huge time saver. They've got my favorite snack that helps me get enough protein even on the go, especially in months like June when I'm traveling so much, and they have my clean cleaning supplies so that I know 
know my house is getting clean without introducing unnecessary chemicals into the situation. As a Thrive Market member, I can save money on every single order. On average, I save over 30% every time. Yes, please. On top of the massive savings on each order, Thrive Market has a deals page that changes daily, which gives me cash back on so many brands, and they have a price match guarantee. Not only does Thrive Market save me money and save me drive time and waiting in line time, they also save me shopping time because I use those filters like a professional. They're on the website and on the app. They have over 70. So when I'm looking for certified gluten-free snacks, or if you're looking for non-toxic cleaning essentials, you can curate your own shopping experience with just a click of a button. When you join Thrive Market, you're also helping a family in need through Thrive's one-for-one membership matching program, which is when you join, they give. And I love that. Just join Thrive Market today and get 30% off your first order, plus a free $60 gift. Let's go. Just go to thrivemarket.com slash that sounds fun for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's T H R I V E market.com slash that sounds fun. Thrivemarket.com slash that sounds fun. And now let's go back and finish up our Enneagram and dating summer love and conversation with Jackie and Toby and Kelly. That sounds fun. So for any of us listening, for the three of us, Mm -hmm. if you said walking out of here, here's the next thing you should do to be healthy and dating in regards to the Enneagram. It would be about you. Mm -hmm. So healthy and dating would be about understanding yourself at a deeper level. And that could be at whatever level you guys are at, whatever curiosity you have. Mm -hmm. The Enneagram is just like a deep dive. There's more and more and more information that you can dive into all the way down to um, attachment styles from from birth forward. You know, it's just Mm -hmm. such a deep well of knowledge. But it would be curiosity around your own your own Mm self-awareness, your own longings. Where where does this longing come from? And that's what I would look at. Like, what is my heart longing? What is this? You know, what does the Enneagram say about this? What is the unconscious messaging that I have had all of my life that I've grown up with? Because that's what's playing in the back mm. of everything that you do. That yeah. is what causes the conflict inside of relationships, loss of friendships, loss of intimate relationships. And I would want to know more about that for myself. Mm. How is this playing out? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where does it come from? And how is it still showing up in my life? Wow. Goodness. Yeah. What questions do y'all have? Do y'all have anything on the front of your brain you like to ask Jackie yeah I love what you said because that really understands like your needs Mm -hmm. and while you were talking I was thinking your needs when you trace it back to like trauma and like childhood Mm -hmm. your needs are completely different than what was given to you and what you experienced and so when you can then process and figure out what it is that you needed initially Mm -hmm. then you can then have language and effectively communicate Mm -hmm. to your partner right Mm. So, yeah, that's wise beyond his 22. Yeah, it is. <laughs> is that yes, 23? Right? Yeah, 23. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. that is like, so that's wise. that's what I don't know that my seven has done, oh myself my as a seven has done very well is let me identify why. The mm. why. I think it's it's interesting when I, when I hear you say this, because how do we get our needs met? And within the Enneagram systems, there's three different um, groupings. So there's that that one, two, six that mm-hmm. we talked about a minute ago. That group is going to move towards people to try to get their needs met. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you if you read about your needs, your unconscious messaging, you're moving towards people to try to do this. The fours, five, nines, they're in this withdrawn stance. Okay. So they move what? away, protect themselves, try to figure this out. I don't know about wow. this. Gosh. I don't know if people feel safe. I'm not sure. I get to figure. I'm not sure. So there's there's a lot of caution. I want to yeah. figure this out for me before anybody can tell me about yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Then there's the assertive stance. And they're like, I will stand independently and push huh. against my need. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, I don't know that you're going to ever meet my needs. So I will figure out how to meet my own need, wow. yes. which causes a lot of problems yeah, in that's adult relationships. Right. <laughs> three, seven, eight. Three, seven, eight. Yeah. So oh, we're like, I'm going to, you know, my husband's always like, here you go again, trying to like push me away. I'm, he's like, all these years, I'm like, I know. I know I'm trying to become more secure, but I'm just yeah. afraid. Like, I'm not pushing you yes. away. I just can handle it. Yes. Yes. I'll just God, do it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm yeah. good. I'm good. Don't worry about it. I don't yeah. need your emotional connection. Wow. And yeah. he's like, here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Or we get in a really big fight and I'm like mm-hmm. very loud. I can't, you can't imagine that. I'm like, bah! and he's quiet. And then I'm like, 
I need you to come towards me. I need you to make me feel better. And he's like, there's nothing about what you're doing right now that is telling me me I should move towards you, (laughs) you know? And I'm like, oh, that's true. I have a cat in a corner with my claws up. Come over here. He's like, no, thanks, Jackie. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And it's been 24 years of this dance. But we can recognize it now and slow it down and talk about it and laugh about it. Where younger version, I got married at 21. Oh my gosh, it was a fight. Mm. Yeah. Two assertive people in yeah. a relationship standing independently and pushing against the other for yeah. fear of getting hurt. Yeah. So you start to unpack those parts of Enneagram mm-hmm. and it makes a whole lot of sense yeah. to the dances wow. that we do. I'm having a thousand thoughts. <laughs> like, is it, I mean, maybe relationships, I mean, duh, all just come down to communication because it can't mm-hmm. be this, hey, here's this thing that I need and mm-hmm. like can you can you meet it? Mm-hmm. Like within the first five minutes. Well yeah. no, chill. Yeah. Um and things having room, right. like time being there mm-hmm. in order to build intimacy, but also not so much that you can't realize your own health n- means mm-hmm. a pivot needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Meaning like I'm just thinking get a few months down the road with a relationship and realize like this actually isn't, Mm -hmm. this isn't it. Mm -hmm. You're really looking for that attunement piece, that, that uh, responsive piece with an, with a partner. Mm -hmm. So you learn the stuff about yourself and then you watch, can they attune to me? Like my husband Mm -hmm. can attune to my crazy, like, oh my gosh. And he's like, here we go, babe calm down, you know, or he'll some, even right now he's like, I think you're trying to start a fight. I'm like, I am. And he's like, I think wow. you want connection. I'm like, I do. <sighs> and he's like, okay, come here. You want to so go for healthy. a walk? What do you need from me? Gracious. Wow. Work, wow. work. Yeah. I just see, mm-hmm. I, I see in that example, mm-hmm. two mm-hmm. people who are not letting pride win. And yeah. oh. I, mm-hmm. pride is such a mm-hmm. safety tool for me, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think for all of us, it's protection, you yeah. know, but it took us a long time to, to come to the understanding. So you're, it's like, Dating somebody for a couple of months and, and watching, do they attune to me? Are they mm-hmm. paying attention to my needs as well as I'm paying attention to theirs? You might get yeah. into a relationship as a two and recognize like I have given and given and given and mm-hmm. given and I've a- attempted a, some attunement and it is like 20% of the time they're willing and the other 80%, this is falling on deaf ears. You just described every relationship I've ever mm-hmm. had. Yeah. And so there's an opportunity for a conversation around, this is what I would really like do you think we can move forward in the relationship this way? Mm. Like, mm. this is what I, I think I need mm. at this stage of the game. Um, and then they have an opportunity to respond. So good. But the hurt on the other side of that yeah. is the, the rejection piece for the two of like, I don't want to ask a question. Right. Because what if they say they can't? I'll just keep doing this. Exactly. Because this might not be what I actually want or need. But at least uh-huh. it's mm-hmm. kind of, you know, the, it's the devil we know versus, yes. you know, the unknown. Oh, I love of, that you said that. Mm-hmm. It's so hard, too, because it's like mm-hmm. unlike other numbers, it feels like, yeah, there's mm-hmm. there's rejection that no one enjoys. But then there's mm-hmm. like rejection. Yeah, I feel like too. twos do take mm-hmm. rejection. Like Ooh. one of our coworkers mm-hmm. will say, well, no one understands that everything goes through the filter of mm-hmm. am I going to be rejected mm-hmm. relationally yeah. here? And I'm like, mm-hmm. well, no, of course not. <laughs> right. This is All work. I did right. was edit the <laughs> right. thing you wrote. Like yeah. that has nothing to do, right. but oh. choose apparently. Feel it. Mm, like, feel it. Yeah, at a yeah. level Where that the, we don't With know. the three of us, threes, sevens, and eights mm-hmm. are like, well, let's roll. Yeah. This wasn't about you. I was just trying to get this thing going forward. Yep. And if there's one thing I could change, mm-hmm. it would be that. And yet that's exactly how I'm made. So. Mm. Why do you think twos mm-hmm. feel it so much? Yeah. Mm. Why? Why, why is that? It's a need. It's a need early on. There's a there's a need that happened early on, a messaging that um, it wasn't okay for you to have your own needs. But for the Enneagram too, that messaging really early on, that's the unconscious messaging. It's not okay for you to have your own needs. You need to figure out how to meet the other people's needs. And then mm. when you do that, you'll get what you need in return, mm. maybe, you know, mm. but that's kind of like the messaging that happens. And so then the Enneagram is like, okay, so for, in order for me to have my, I'm not allowed to tell anybody or show my, that I have needs. I need to be self-sufficient. So I need to give and give and give and give. And I'm hoping somebody will just turn around and see everything I've given and give me back, give back to me. But it's not a mean, manipulative, ugly piece of a two. It is this beautiful, beautiful, nurturing, Mm -hmm. um, caring side of a two. So it's not this like give to get that you might hear. You might see that said sometimes in different phrasing. She'll say that about herself. She'll say, I'm trying not to just give to get. We're like, you don't do that. So, (laughs) So it's not... It's not at a conscious level Hmm. that that happens, but at a subconscious level, 
since you were probably very little, that was how you learned to get love. If I do the dishes for mom, she'll probably praise me. If I do this for so and so, they'll they'll be happy about this. If I, mm-hmm. you know, help my teacher, she'll smile. Like I will feel I will feel seen. I will feel valued. And that's really what the two is like. Please somebody see me a lot like the seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Please somebody see me. Please somebody love me. Mm-hmm. Somebody please see me as worth loving. Wow. I get the heart of that as a seven. The two and the seven share a lot of those similarities. What mm-hmm. you're teaching us, Jackie, is so important because some of the negative feelings about Enneagram are that you're born this way and you mm-hmm. cannot change. Nope, it's not true. And it's like, no, there's some nature mm-hmm. to it because you mm-hmm. God did make our personalities before we were born. Yeah. And yet we're shaped. Yes. Yeah, so mm-hmm. temperament yes. does not change. Yeah. Temperament is permanent. The behavior patterns that make up your personality, those you guys, we can we can learn, we can do better, we can mm-hmm. understand, we can start to notice like what is working and what is not working. And things that worked for a really long time might not work anymore and it's okay. Mm -hmm. But we can begin to become more aware of that. Mm -hmm. And so that's the pivot towards growth. That's why it's different than any other personality typing system because there is a growth track. Mm -hmm. We are not putting you in a box. We are not telling you this is it. We are not giving you excuse for poor behavior. We are saying, hey, do you want to know more about yourself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know where things come from? Do you want to get healthy? Do you want to get whole? And understanding this, you know, the Enneagram does not make us healthy and whole. Our relationship with the Lord ha- helps us to do that. Mm-hmm. But the awareness helps us to know what to bring to him Yes, mm-hmm. that, that is broken yeah. or that right. isn't working. Yeah. Right. Mm. Jackie, That's this good. is why, I mean, here's what we haven't even gotten to is like breakups and sex. Oh, oh my gosh. And I mean, there's all these things that yeah. really matter in dating mm. that are affected by who we are that we bring to the relationships. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the goal of this whole series mm-hmm. is to bridge people to experts. Mm. And so we will just bridge everyone to you mm. and you can pick up where we left off <laughs> and continue so, talking about this. Do y'all have we, other Can we schedule or... sometimes? <laughs> yes. Can we go ahead? Exactly. Let's just transition into something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The last question I'm going to ask, because the show is called That Sounds Fun, mm-hmm. I want each of you to tell me what sounds fun to you, but I can't wait to hear it because Toby, you're going to say it like a three. Kelly, you're going to say it like a two. And Jackie, you're going to say it like a seven. So I cannot wait. So Toby, you start. Because the show is called That Sounds Fun, tell me what sounds fun to you. I love traveling mm-hmm. so much. So um, I'm actually planning a trip for to go to France. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, hopefully in the next two months, I can finally go to New York for the first yeah. time. So, I cannot believe you have it. It goodness. feels like you would mm-hmm. thrive yes. in New York. Uh, that's what everyone keeps telling me. Yes, yes. We so may never bad. get you back. I know. Yeah, that's <laughs> the only problem. Yes. Here, Sorry. this seven yeah. sets. Yep. Don't yes. go. Let's, Sorry, why don't Mom. you go in November? Go in November. November. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's freezing. cold. Exactly. It's too cold. Exactly. <laughs> that, <laughs> bring you back. Back. that is the mother yeah. saying yeah, that. Go in November. Like, text my mom, like, hey, mom, move to New York. Yeah, no. We got to be drivable back to ATL. True. That's exactly right. Good answer. Kel? Mm. I am really excited about a beach trip, a wedding, and my nephew's birthday trip coming yeah. up. All three in like the next month. That oh, really? Fun. I'm so excited. Okay, I well, need to get on your calendar. I need to pay more attention to when you're traveling. We'll just hang out every <laughs> other day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, travel is it's one so of the benefits great. of not being married today. Oh, my goodness. The three yes. of us can go at our leisure uh, to yep. New York and France and the beach mm-hmm. and yeah. yeah it's mm-hmm. a little bit easier than when there's mm-hmm. four so little true. people at home yeah you yeah. are not little anymore yeah. your kids no, are big two of them kids. are not even they're like adults yes. launched two adults proper adults yeah I know um, um, okay so what sounds fun to you Jackie oh my gosh so much sounds fun I know. to me <laughs> <laughs> like what does it so, sound much fun. so travel I go to California in a couple weeks that Yay. sounds fun staying at the beach for a month oh on fun. the beach yeah rented a condo gonna do work out dreaming from, oh my awesome. gosh I can't wait I think I'm hoping ready, yeah. that I enjoy it. Close um, to where your daughter's in school or far away from that? Uh, she can drive to me every weekend oh, so I can see her. Um, yeah. That's She's loving college. She's not coming yeah. home for the summer. She's she is thriving. So, so I think, I mean, watching my kids become adults yeah. sounds fun. Yeah. Um, so much. Like the possibilities around, I don't know, purpose. Yeah. You know, I was a stay-at-home mom for a really long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think life in general just mm-hmm. feels like... Lord, I don't know what you're up to, but I want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you've got time on your schedule because I think you're about to have (laughs) 70 to 100,000 people who in the first week who would like to talk to you. Let's do it. You may be doing an Enneagram in your dating life book next because you are so helpful. I mean, I feel like I have so many 
thoughts. We could do. I have more questions. We could do two more hours. <laughs> yeah. I know. But thank you, Jackie. Uh, thank you. Your for work having is me. so helpful. It's so great. helpful. Toby and so Kel, well done. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Is this your first podcast ever? First ever. Wow. Oh, you're we're here. <laughs> you're like a you second. Got I, I did this. The snack show. Oh yeah, that's right. You you stay on. You stay on that so, sounds fun network. I really I appreciate. I do have a, a preferred network. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, y'all did very very well. Well Thank done. You. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you guys, aren't they all the best? Isn't Jackie brilliant? Oh my gosh, we just kept talking after we hit stop and. It's just incredible. She's just so, so smart. Whether you are single or dating or engaged or married, be sure to check out Jackie's book, The Enneagram and Your Marriage, a seven-week guide to better understanding and loving your spouse. Go follow her on Instagram. She is always posting helpful tips. And as always, for a full list of all the resources and Instagram handles for our experts in this summer loving series, just go to AnnieFDowns.com slash dating. Okay, you guys, make sure you follow along through the rest of Summer Lovin' so that you get to hear the whole experience. And if you're single or dating or just love somebody who is, please share the show with your friends and your loved ones. It can help them understand you and each other and 50% of the population better. If you need anything else from me, you know I'm embarrassingly easy to find. Annie F. Downs on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on the road for the Here For You Tour. Listen, tonight we're in Minneapolis. Tomorrow we're in Grand Rapids. Will I see you there? Listen. Grab your tickets if you haven't already. We've still got a seat for you. Just go to hereforyoutour.com. And I think that's it for me today, friends. Go out or stay home and do something that sounds fun to you. And I will do the same. Today, what sounds fun to me, what sounds fun to me today? Man, I love being in Minneapolis. The summer weather in Minneapolis and in Grand Rapids this weekend is what I am here for. So I'm just going to be outside. I'm going to be outside until you are lined up outside and ready to come to the Here For You Tour. So I'll see y'all tonight, Minneapolis. Y'all have a great weekend. I am going to have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday for our conversation about friendship and dating, friendship between married and single people, friendship between men and women, friendship between all of us. We got to figure it out. We're going there on Monday, you guys, with one of our very favorites, Jess Connolly. She's just incredible, as well as my friends Lonnie and John David. You're going to love them. Y'all have a great weekend. We'll see you out there at the Here For You Tour, and we'll see you back here on Monday.